Mm-hmm. What the? Now? Hello, Neo. Huh? They're watching you, Neo. Who? Please just listen. I know why you're here. I know why you feel your students hardly learn. Why you teach alone, and why night after night you sit at your computer. You gotta clear the history. You're looking for it. I know, because I was once looking for the same thing. I was looking for an answer. But it's the question that drives us. You know the question, just as I did. What is Yes, that? what is the flipped classroom? Well, what is a flipped classroom? Different people will give you a variety of answers to this question. That's fine, because it is an evolving concept. But here's my take. You flip your classroom when you free up class time, usually taken up by lectures, and invest that time in cognitively and creatively more demanding learning activities with your students. How do you free up the time? Mostly with internet video. Now, some say the videos should be watched before class, others say in class. Some say the videos must be your own, others say that other teachers' videos will do fine. Some believe that it's better to show your face in the videos and others, well, don't. Why not all of the above? There's no single way to learn. Why would there be a single way to use video in a flip classroom? We have to keep in mind that video is just a small part of flipping. No matter how a classroom is flipped, the most important thing is good didactics and better use of class time. The two most important things are good didactics, better use of class time, and ubiquitous access to content. The three! Ah, uh, well, you know. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. As you can see, we've had our eye on you for some time now, Mr. Anderson. It seems that you've been living two lives. In one life, you're a traditional teacher for a respectable school, giving one-size-fits-all lectures to your students, and you help them carry out their textbook exercises. The other life, you teach with computers, you explore the possibilities offered by internet video to differentiate your teaching and use more class time to engage your students in various supposedly cognitively more demanding learning activities. One of these lives has a future, Mr. Anderson. The other one does not. Who knows what the school of the future will look like? I seriously doubt the one-size-fits-all lecture will be part of it, not only because of its lackluster results for so many learners, and we did give it the old college try, but also because that's not how the world consumes information anymore. Who watches a TV show or movie with commercials and all at the precise moment that it airs? More and more people record, stream, or download their entertainment and view it at a time of their choosing, where they want and on whichever device they prefer. I know, I know, school is not entertainment. But wouldn't you say the rigidly scheduled traditional classroom is like being forced to watch a TV show at the moment that it airs? Education is not entertainment, but we should learn from it. Flipping a classroom is allowing ubiquitous access to information and content. I see two ways of doing this. I'll call them flipping out and flipping in. Today, anyone with an internet connection can learn anything, anytime, anywhere. Your learners can flip out in order to review prior knowledge or recap new stuff. Mind you, the videos don't have to be lectures per se. They could be invitations to reflect, to inquire, to construct, to collaborate. The learner can also access the content in class when need be. Let's call that flipping in. My colleague Avi Spector and I found a way to do this in our workshops. We prepare little cards with QR codes on them. Imagine that the participants are working on a big project in small teams. Once we notice that some of them are having trouble with a certain concept and that we have prepared content to address that, we give them a card. They scan the code that's on the card and they get a short helpful video on their smartphone or tablet right then and now. 
This way, we haven't disrupted the whole group for something that was only relevant for a few participants at that precise moment. In a classroom, you could even have posters on the walls with QR codes that point to some frequently useful videos. At last.